those of the participants and do not necessarily reflect those of Rogers nor Rogers TV. Securing your recycling in a few steps is simple, like bundling your cardboard separately. These bundles can act as a lid for your blue box or placing heavier items such as magazines on top of papers with no material above the rim. Hello everyone and welcome to Talk Politics. I'm Deborah Hutchison. This week we're going to do something a little different. You can't turn on the TV or change the channel without hearing about COVID-19. But how do you separate the facts from the myths? Uh, are we panicking unnecessarily? What is the reality? Uh, to help us answer those questions, we've got Dr. Robert Kyle, the Durham Regent Medical Officer of Health, joining us, and Jasmine Bond. Jasmine is the Populate Manager of Population Health with the Durham Regent Health Department. Thanks so much for joining us. Great, great to you. be here. So much material to cover. So I have so many questions for you. And we must uh, also mention that we're taping this on March 12th. Okay. Because. The information we, that we have coming in, it, it changes, it seems, minute by minute, does it not? Yes, it does. There, we're being bombarded with, uh, with new information, and I'm sure some is coming in as we're talking right now. Well, the World Health Organization just yesterday uh, labeled this as a pandemic. What's a pandemic? Uh, well, I would um, refer your audience to the WHO, WHO website. But basically, um, it's uh, a label that's indicating that COVID-19 is occurring in multiple countries. And in many of those jurisdictions, um, the contain containment measures are not working. And so there is widespread uh, transmission. Um, but if you go to the uh, World Health Organization, the remarks by the uh, Director General, um, he does remind his uh, listeners to stay calm, to do what you can to control the spread, either through self-isolation, hygiene, that sort of thing, and uh, calls on member states to um, continue their vigilance with containment measures and that sort of thing, and we can talk about that as the interview yeah. goes on. Well, I want to start with what is COVID-19? Where did it come from? What's so, ground zero? Yeah, yeah. Let's, so, let me throw that one out there for so, you. So it's a respiratory uh, infection, viral respiratory infection. Uh, we believe it has its origins in China uh, with uh, coronaviruses they often start in an animal community, then um, mutate or otherwise gets transmitted to humans, and then it takes off from there. And uh, I would advise your um, audience to go to the Ontario.ca forward slash coronavirus uh, or Government of Canada coronavirus uh, website and they get into um, what are zoonotic uh, infections, what is its origin, and that sort of thing. But basically, it's, a, it's a, an animal-based uh, uh, viral infection that uh, eventually made its way into uh, humans. How is it spread? So I think the science indicates that it's spread through droplets, which means um, if uh, you're infected, Mm -hmm. and you sneeze and somebody is near you or you sneeze into your hand and you shake somebody's hand or you share a drink or uh, you share personal uh, items that are contaminated with, uh, with saliva that you pass it on through droplets. I would contrast that to say tuberculosis where it's spread in the air and you sort of breathe it in and there doesn't need to be um, contact with um, with uh, with uh, droplets mm -hmm. that contaminate hands or are transmitted uh, directly. In the healthcare setting, uh, certain procedures. I'm thinking of uh, ventilation, for example. They may uh, generate aerosols, 
and so it may be transmitted in a different way in the healthcare setting and because of that uh, precautions may be different in a healthcare setting than in a community setting but I think it's uh, largely droplet spread. That's right. Yep. Mm -hmm. How long though that does the virus, do we know how long the virus lives on uh, you know, a, an object? So because I, here, we, here we are you know, taking disinfectant wipes and we're, you know, not only we're we washing our hands, but we're wiping down everything. How long does it live? So it does live uh, outside the body, but it is a virus. So it needs to um, uh, make its way to a cell to propagate and to, um, uh, and to live. And so um, I'd have to go to the scientific um, literature or credible source to find out how many uh, hours or days outside of the, the body. Uh, off the top of my head, I can't answer that. But yeah, you know? right now at this stage, they're saying between hours and days. Uh, it's early. It's because an early we don't know, right? It, there's just virus. so much unknown at this point. Well, uh, that's right. Uh, the science is being generated as we talk. Uh, we're learning about uh, this virus, and uh, I'm sure it's. Um, its properties are under active uh, research um, you know, throughout the world, quite frankly. All right, next question, um, signs and symptoms. Um, yeah. Jasmine, maybe okay. I'll throw this over to you too because it seems to me all the signs and symptoms that I've heard could be a multitude of other things as well. Oh, for sure, right? and we're getting calls uh, regularly on our uh, Durham Health Connection line with the exact same question. Yeah. How do I know? What am I looking for? And so for um, the, the relevant signs and symptoms, you're really looking for a fever okay, or the onset of acute respiratory symptoms. And so by that we mean a cough, mm -hmm. shortness of breath, difficulty breathing. If you have a chronic cough, it could be a change in your cough that is worse oh, than okay. what you're used to. So some people always have a cough and so in this mm -hmm. case you're looking for worsening cough. Uh, but but, but, but the, the, the symptoms are similar to other viral respiratory well, yeah. uh, illnesses um, and so you can't uh, say that it's COVID-19 and in fact uh, most of the tests that uh, have been conducted certainly in mm -hmm. Durham region have yeah. been negative for, uh, for COVID-19 and as of today I'm only aware of uh, two positive tests. Right. Has it changed now? That's right. Well, as of March 12th. Yeah. Just so we're, yeah. We're, we're taping this March 12th. So that, that's right. So the 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 vast majority of tests to date have been negative. I can't say that testing occurred to find other uh, other um, viruses or agents that are um, causing it. But I would say that we are still in flu season. Mm -hmm. and the symptoms and signs are similar, we still have high uh, flu activity, uh, so there's a lot happening in the, uh, in the uh, community and people may be confused. Um, I mean, because we've got yeah. good old-fashioned colds too. And I know a lot of people colds. out there that have you know, stuffiness mm -hmm. and, a, and, and a head cold. Yeah, and there, there, are, there, are, there are many viruses that give a, a similar type of uh, a picture. We call it febrile respiratory illness, mm -hmm. um, and there are multiple causes. It's a uh, sort of a cluster of, uh, of uh, symptoms um, that uh, indicate your, your uh, respiratory tract is infected. So if you suspect then that something is wrong, your, your cough is worsening, you've got the fever, you've got the cough, you just don't know, what should people do? So they can call the Durham Health Connection line and they'll be asked a few additional questions to help establish if there is a risk for COVID-19. And that is primarily around travel. Mm -hmm. And so the most likely places where um, the disease is coming from right now continue to be travel outside of Canada with a couple of really affected areas named such as Hubei, China and mm -hmm. Iran. Uh, they're still named as places with a lot of transmission happening locally. But the WHO is expanding the list of affected areas daily. Daily, yeah. And so it's important that uh, if you're concerned about your travel, you can call, you can speak to a public health nurse, you can get some advice about whether the place you've traveled from is of concern for COVID-19 mm -hmm. and if the symptoms match. Um, largely, the, the calls have been from people who are trying to do the right thing 
Right. They're trying to make sure they don't go to work when they're sick, that they get tested if they need testing. I wouldn't say this is panic. I would say this is people looking for good advice, and they're coming to the right place to get it. Uh, panic, no, but I don't know. Have you tried to find toilet paper in the stores lately? <laughs> What's that about? Well, it's a, it's a, a news, new disease, and uh, there is a lot of panic and yeah. uh, fear out that, uh, uh, fear about that. Of course, it's fed by the 24/7 uh, news cycle, and we're just being bombarded with information and images. Uh, so it's understandable that there's a, a lot of uh, panic there, and um, there are messages from some quarters with respect to prepare for a pandemic and so forth and at a practical level uh, I think people translate that into hand sanitizer, toilet uh, products and so forth and so on uh, but it's understandable. What, so if people want to prepare and they don't want to be caught short mm -hmm. what should they be stocking up on. So I think the more likely situation is that you may not have the illness but you may find yourself under a two-week quarantine if there's right. been an exposure. Uh, and so those questions are, are excellent questions to think of what it would be like to be in your home and not be able to get out to replenish for a couple of weeks. Hence the toilet paper. Right. Um, it's an essential. Uh, you know, so our kind of list of suggestions include things that you'd want to use to keep yourself well. So if you were looking after a person who was sick, you'd want um, acetaminophen, you'd want to be able to uh, provide fluids, uh, so those go-to foods that you have when you're sick, like soup or something. Um, the non-perishables are a good recommendation right, right. now. We've got rice, beans, uh, dry right. foods that you can package, peanut butter. Um, if if there was a person in your house and you're looking after them and they're sick, you want to make sure you've got the hand sanitizer or mm -hmm. hand soap so you can keep your uh, hand hygiene. You want to do your normal cleaning and disinfecting or maybe a bit more if there's a person who's ill in your home. We always remind people to look after their pets, so you might want pet food, you might want right. pet supplies. Right. Um, another thing to consider is if you have prescription medications or other products that you need for your regular health care routine, uh, so stocking up to make sure that you might be able to get through the two weeks. Uh, and direction. I do want to um, direct people also to your, your website, yeah. durhams.ca, yes. uh, to check out. You have a very comprehensive uh, lists there you have mm -hmm. uh, great videos of how to properly wash your hands and protect yourself let's get into how you can protect yourself uh, we, we have to take a quick break but uh, we'll be back with more after this Recycling in a few steps is simple, like crushing your cans and bottles down in your container's blue box and your box board down in your paper's box. This saves a lot of space and reduces the possibility of material blowing out of your blue box on windy days. Most people living with it don't even know they have it. I'm Alex Lifeson. My family, like many of yours, has dealt with the conditions that cause kidney disease. If you have diabetes, high blood pressure, or a family member with kidney disease, you are at risk. If you are overweight or over 50, you are at risk. And certain ethnic groups are also at higher risk. Please talk to your family doctor and have your kidney function checked regularly. race director of the Around the Bay Road Race. Join us on March 29th on Cable 14. On this brand new edition of The Social Life, we have everything you need to know about the brand new Bachelorette, Claire Crawley. Plus, we are talking about Instagram's latest update in Canada. I don't want to spoil it for you guys, so you're going to stay tuned.
and we are back. This week we are in conversation with Dr. Robert Kyle. He is the Durham Region Medical Officer of Health and Jasmine Bond, Manager of Population Health with the Durham Region Health Department. And we're focusing on COVID-19. We're trying to separate the facts from the myths, uh, the reality from the panic. Um, let, let's talk about how we reduce the spread of germs and how we protect ourselves. So Jasmine, let's, let's yeah, start sure. with you. You already started to mention it at the beginning yeah. of the interview where you mentioned um, hand hygiene. Yeah. And we do have a great video on durham.ca showing you, you can do hand hygiene with warm water and soap, or you can use an alcohol-based hand sanitizer. And how long do we wash our hands, you Jasmine? You need to lather for 15 seconds, or you need to alcohol rub for 15 full seconds. You need to do that to get rid of the germ. You know, someone once told me when my son was, was really young, teach them to sing like the ABCs, sure. like yeah. the A, B, C, D. And by yeah. the time you get to the end of the alphabet, you're good. Yes. Yeah, and you have to make sure you get all the uh, cracks and crevices and so forth when you're doing your thing for that uh, 15 seconds. Yeah. Okay. So that's, that's the facts in between. Something so simple, but. Yep, there's a video there if someone wanted to watch Agnes Kim. She does a really great version. The tips, the palms, mm -hmm. the backs between. She's, she does yeah. a really great job. And keep those hands away from the mouth, the yes. nose, and the eyes. Do you know how difficult that is this morning? The crew and I, well, I was. Like I was mentioning to the crew, how often I caught myself touching my face. Yep, that's another really important tip to remember because any of your mucous membranes, your eyes, your nose, your mouth, that's a portal of entry for the virus. And so if you're gonna touch there with your hands that have been everywhere else, mm -hmm. you're bringing the germs right there. So if you do need to do contact lenses or mm -hmm. um, oral care for some reason, yes. wash your hands first. You need to remember what about the to ears? do that. Same, just keep your hands clean when you're touching in there. Okay, some other tips. Okay, so cough etiquette. I, you know, we talk about this a lot with the flu season anyway, yeah. but you, you know, you need to cough into a tissue or into elbow. your elbow. Encourage others to do it as well. Yeah. Um, if you use a tissue, make sure you throw it out right away and wash your hands. There's a theme here, it's gonna keep right. coming. Um, social distancing. And so when we're around people, we can create some space between ourselves and others, a meter to two meters. It's a nice way. Uh, you know, of pre preventing the spread. And okay, how far should you keep, the, you know, yeah. that social distance? A meter to two, a t meter to two meters. And if someone's coughing, you just avoid that situation altogether. Run the other way. You just, you don't want to be there right now. It's not the time. Right. Uh, similarly, you want to do your regular cleaning and disinfecting, as I mentioned earlier. Mm -hmm. You don't want to leave that. You, handrails, doorknobs, taps. Those are the, the high touch areas. Um, if you are, you know, teams and sports and water bottles. That's Things a big concern around. too. They all look yeah. the same. You don't want to label them. You don't want to share water bottles, straws, eating utensils, toothbrushes, cigarettes, little kids who use uh, toys in their mouths. You don't want mm -hmm. those going between anything with nose and throat secretions. You don't want to be sharing. Um, if you are ill, you need to stay home from mm -hmm. school and work. And so we're all guilty of it. We feel a fever coming on and we might take acetaminophen or we have a cough. Yeah, we'll power through yes. it, right? We've Isn't that the... Stiff upper lip. Yeah. Yes, yeah, this yeah. is not the time for that. You need to lower your threshold for when to stay home from school and work. And you know what, though? I think a lot, while a lot of companies have said to their mm -hmm. employees, we understand, you stay away, yeah. you know, nobody's going to be productive if you get everybody sick. Stay away, we'll take care of you. There's also that prevailing attitude or worry on behalf of the employee the companies may say one thing, but in reality, it, it's different. Yeah, every, every circumstance is different, and uh, uh, an employee will take whatever um, working arrangements they have into account. But in terms of public health messaging, it, it really comes down to if you're stick, sick, stay home. Mm -hmm. What about going out into large groups we're hearing a lot about that especially with um you know the basketball season mm -hmm. has been suspended there's now um you know thoughts will that will, will hockey follow yeah so I'll, I'll start and maybe turn it over to jazz and so uh, public health authorities in canada and in other countries i'm sure are hoping that current measures which we uh, call containment so this is the early detection of cases, uh, isolating cases, identifying their contacts, 
and uh, having their contacts either self-isolate or self-monitor. We're hoping that those uh, measures uh, are, are effective. And the numbers seem to be bearing that out. Uh, however, uh, that's not the case in other jurisdictions, and uh, it depends on the circumstance as to whether or not, for example, there is a local rule or ordinance uh, as part of their containment measures that they are limiting mm -hmm. mass gatherings, mm -hmm. say, over a certain uh, population. I don't think we're there yet in, uh, in, in Canada. Uh, but it's hard uh, not to be mindful of what's uh, happening uh, elsewhere. Uh, and going back to credible sources, in terms of um, consideration, say um, a conference organizer uh, may want to think about in uh, determining whether they should go ahead with uh, mm -hmm. a, a planned mass gathering, uh, Public Health Agency of, uh, of Canada has um, a good uh, web page that talks about some of those um, uh, considerations. At the end of the day, it's up to conference organizers and indeed uh, individuals uh, to decide is the benefit of proceeding Mm -hmm. uh, versus the risk of, uh, of cancelling and or at an individual level not attending, uh, are the benefits um, greater than the, uh, the risks and uh, people are making those decisions in, in uh, fact, as we talk. Well, as we talk, the director, John Green, thank you, in my ear, just informed me that the NHL has, has decided Is that, right? th that they're going to suspend um, as well. Who's at risk of, uh, we hear about a lot of it, the cases being fairly mild. You know, people put themselves in self-isolation and they're fine. Um, who's really at risk for yeah. serious? So, so uh, the evidence to date suggests that older persons who have what we call in the business comorbidity, so these would be chronic diseases, uh, they would be at a higher risk for complications um, and uh, the key complication is of course uh, pneumonia. Mm -hmm. The evidence suggests that um, for the vast majority of persons who are infected uh, that it's a mild illness, uh, that they fully recover. Uh, the numbers I have seen are in the 80 percent range and for those who are uh, um, develop complications, uh, the vast majority uh, recover. Some do require um, intense in, uh, acute care and unfortunately a few uh, do uh, go on to, uh, to pass away. I, I'm a public health guy so I'd be remiss in not saying uh, the um, risk factors for developing complications beyond age are the same for chronic diseases. What are they? Well, there's smoking, mm -hmm. there's uh, poor uh, eating, unhealthy eating, there's physical inactivity, excessive alcohol use. Uh, so um, these uh, risk factors take a toll on all infectious diseases, or at least those that, uh, that, have, uh, th that are respiratory and are prone to complications. Uh, those are the uh, underlying, uh, or same underlying risk factors for chronic uh, diseases. I don't know if you have anything to add. That's great. Yeah. Well, I, well, I was going to say, what, when it comes to seniors, I mean, my mother is in her 80s, yeah. and among her and her friends, they're all talking about limiting even just going out. Is that taking it a step too far? Well, I think... Um, they all have conditions that yeah. they're dealing with, but what do you say to a senior who just doesn't know what to yeah, do? Yeah. I think that because uh, most persons in a retirement home or a long-term care home are of that age group that yeah. are at highest risk for complications and may have many of those chronic diseases, they're particularly at risk. I know that the Ministry of Long-Term Care has been seized with this issue and has um, or will be issuing uh, guidance to long-term care homes in particular about 
uh, screening of, uh, of uh, staff and uh, visitors. Mm -hmm. uh, but once, uh, once disease gets established there, um, uh, respiratory outbreaks are not uncommon They're very in, common. in uh, long-term care homes, yeah. retirement homes, and there are mechanisms, rules, and uh, precautions in, in place to deal with outbreaks and personal protective equipment uh, for staff working in there. So we have a pretty good um, we have a pretty good uh, set of rules and uh, and uh, resources to deal with uh, higher risk populations. But you're quite right; um, uh, that is a uh, a population of concern, uh, uh, certainly in Ontario and probably worldwide. I don't know if you have any other comments. Well, I just want to. We're all actually almost out of time. Okay. I do want to uh, to ask you about self isolation and the challenges. Right. If you get sick. And you have a family at home. Yeah. How does that work? So, you know, if, if it was possible, we would definitely recommend that people who can leave the home do so while the mm -hmm. sick person is recovering. It's not always possible. And so if uh, we can offer some tips about how to successfully manage the home isolation, um, that person, if possible, should sleep in their own room. Mm -hmm. If they can, take their meals in that room. If they need to um, mingle in the common areas of the home, they can wear a surgical mask at that time to help limit the spread of the virus. Others, as well as the sick person, would want to be uh, performing hand hygiene regularly mm -hmm. and cleaning and disinfecting high touch surfaces, just as we've mentioned before. Uh, it is a challenge, and so uh, this has already come up in conversation with people in Durham Region. Uh, we do have a fact sheet on durham.ca that can mm -hmm. assist people who are trying to manage home isolation. And a mask is not going to protect you. I really want to talk about that. Really but you know quickly. what? We're out of time. Oh. But the answer is no, right? The That's mask right. is not going to protect you. The mask is for the same person it. only. Okay. Yeah. Our thanks to Dr. Robert Kyle and to Jazz and Bod for joining us. And thanks to you for letting us in your home. Until next time, I'm Deborah Hutchison. Bye bye. Rogers TV viewer response line, email us or connect with us on social media. Your visit isn't really necessary. I'll judge for myself. I know you're an MP, Miss McPhail, but a woman has never... I am not leaving till I do. be called civilized. If those appalling conditions don't change, that prison will explode. Perhaps our lone lady member is too fragile to know what is normal in a prison. Is this normal? Her courage would lead to the overhaul of the entire Canadian penal system. Agnes McPhail, Canada's first woman MP. After a night out with your friends, there's always options for getting home safely. You could call your BFF, your mom or dad, whoever you can count on for a safe ride home. You could call your favorite cab company or one triple eight taxi guy, or you could use the Arrival Live smartphone app to help you choose your ride. Be it a friend, 